One of my favorite things about spring is tucking in to the first picnic of the year. Now, when I was a boy, the sandwiches were made from white sliced and no options. But these days, artisan bread is the must have for all smart picnickers. And good bread depends on good flour. Here in the Malverns, the 18th century water mill at East Norcastle would have once produced the kind of stuff that today's craft bakers are crying out for. Jules is in a sleepy corner of Yorkshire to find out about a dream job at the heart of this bread-based revolution. Wanted, Miller for 17th century watermill comes with 240 acres of countryside on your doorstep. Now, let's see, energetic. Yes, practical. I'd like to think so. There, send. Sounds just a job. If you fancy escaping the rat race and earning a crust in the countryside, one of Britain's old-fashioned mills is on the lookout for a miller. And there's never been a better time to get a slice of the action. The baking industry is worth an estimated £3.6 billion pounds a year. To put that in real terms, that means we get through some 11 million loaves of bread every day. Now, the miller here, Richard Moss, has had enough of putting his nose to the grindstone and he's about to retire, so they're looking for a replacement. Richard's been working here at the Wurzborough Mill in Barnsley, South Yorkshire, for 20 years. Hi, Jules. Nice to see you, mate. How are you? you, yeah. Recently, the number of bakeries has risen by a staggering 1,500%, and they may soon overtake coffee shops on our high streets. So Richard's leaving at a point when traditional milling and baking are in a state of rude good health. Do you think, though, Richard, the job has changed throughout your career? It has changed drastically throughout my career, yeah, definitely. I mean, when I first started, the two old guys that were here were milling mainly for school groups and for demonstration purposes. But in the last six years in particular, we reinvented the product, as it were, and we've gone from a tonne and a half in our first year. Um, I think we topped out at 17 tonnes this last year. Wow. And that's growing all the time. People are, are, are waking up to the benefits of the slow ground flour. And uh, the fact that it's organic and totally British wheat brings in the low full miles as well. There's been a mill in or around Wordsborough since the Doomsday Book was written in 1086. But its working parts come mostly from its Victorian heyday. Right, Jules. Oh, cheers, mate. Thank you very much. You need, a bit, you need a bit of white in this job. <laughs> well, that's not what it all starts as. Richard's agreed to see if I'm cut out for the life of a miller. But with zero experience, I'll need to have my wits about me. Well, this is where we need to be first. It is a very safety-aware job. Because most people probably don't appreciate, but flour, dust... It ignites readily, doesn't it? But yeah, it's just like coal dust. When it's suspended in the atmosphere, it's highly explosive. <laughs> so. I don't remember firefighting being part of that idyllic job description. Quickly, we're losing product here. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> right, right, okay. There you go. Ten minutes into my apprenticeship, I'm wondering how I ever thought this kind of hard labour could be a romantic career choice. It's getting slacker now. There you go, that's it. It's just just like cleaning your chimney. Yeah. You do a lot of ducking around here, don't you? You do. 14, 17, 18. 18. Say <laughs> so when. Yeah, you're fine for now. You can leave that running for a little while. 60. Well done. And how long are you hoping to mill for on a good day? I think we'll get done for about 10 o'clock tonight, Jules. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> <laughs> long days. Only apply if you like long days. <laughs> right. In the year 2000, there were around 18 traditional mills making a crust. Today, that number has more than doubled to 40. But after all that hard graft, do you really get a better end product? With this type of milling, it's a slower grind. You don't get the heat building up in the stones like you do in modern roller mills. Yeah. And so basically what you're getting in the grain that's come off the field is what you're getting in the flour. So I think we're at a point now, Jules, if you want to check what's coming through now. And we should. It's like milking a cow. You've got yeah. that pulse of <laughs> products. So and if I squeeze that together. Yeah. 
Oh, look at that. That's just started to crumble apart at the ends. That's what we're after. So, million dollar question. My first day on the job, how have I done? You've done absolutely brilliant. But then again, you've had a good teacher. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> My milling skills are questionable, but there's no mistaking our growing appetite for so-called craft bread, with more than one supermarket reporting increased sales of up to 40%. The mill here at Wurzborough supplies 20 artisan outlets, and one of them is run by expert baker Jackie Jackson. Hello, Jackie. Hello. Nice to see you. And I'm hoping she can tell me why fancy bread is on the rise. People are demanding more for the money. Why take all that goodness out and create a plain, dull, white sliced loaf? It's got its place, but you can get all the, those rich things like iron, calcium, you know, out of the natural grains. I mean, I suppose one of the things that many people will be concerned about is that artisan bread is going to seem that bit more expensive compared to your you know, run-of-the-mill white bread you're going to find in the shops. It can be. It depends what, uh, you know, how you place it because you get a lot more for your money out of artisan bread. You take a slice of this and you, you won't want to go back for a second one because you'll be full. Our hunger for traditional bread means that more and more of us are making our own. And the number of baking classes is on the up, including one run by Jackie. So she's well placed to know what's trending in the world of the posh loaf. So your artisan breads are made uh, with sourdoughs and sourdough is like creating that ferment without adding yeast. So what are your favourites amongst this lot? Well, I do like the simple cottage loaf. Well, I say it's simple, or we call it uh, in Yorkshire the Yorkshire cob. And this is just made with the organic uh, white flour from the mill here and it creates a beautiful crumb, oh. as you can see. Yeah. This one's packed with a real mixture of your rye flour and wholemeal and the uh, organic white. But just to add a bit of interest, I put pecans in there and some honey. So I've naturally sweetened it with honey <laughs> rather than sugar. It's enough to make a would-be miller ravenous. So I'm meeting Richard again to taste the fruits of our labour. Hey, Richard. Hi, hey, Jules. <laughs> there we are. Glad you brought the tea. Oh, yes. Well, should we try some of this bread? Yeah, fantastic. I know you've probably had tons of it over your lifetime, but... You can never get enough of Yorkshire bread. This particular grain that we use has got a really nutty flavour to it, mm. and it really comes out. And these ducks are obviously used to it. Oh, but they're not getting any of this. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, mate. Very, very best of luck. Thank you. Well, I might not have what it takes to fill Richard's shoes, but milling is one of those artisan trades that's enjoying a real revival. And I tell you what, it's not a bad way to earn your daily bread.